chapter 1 test, sections 1 1 to 1 6, taken on November 14, 2018, versions H, E, and F. Question number 1 the function y equals uh, f of x is reflected over the x axis and is then translated. Uh, five units down, what is the equation of the transformed function? So when you see the word reflected in the x-axis, this is a negative sign <coughs> on the outside of the parentheses. So this would match and this one would match. Um, notice how these have negative signs on the inside. These would be reflections about the y-axis. When it says translated down five units, this is on the outside of the uh, equation. So down is minus five. So this would be correct, and this one would be correct. Plus five here means going up. Um, so the correct answer is seven. Question number two, I mean uh, extra credit. Evaluate the piecewise function. Uh, it tells you f of negative three. Remember, in function notation, you're going to write a um, x above it. So the inside of the function is your x value. So x is negative 3. The question is, where is negative 3? Is negative 3 bigger than negative 1? No, it's not. Is negative 3 smaller than negative 1? That is true. That's what your equation you would put into. So you would put in negative 3 into here. So that would be negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 1 gives you negative 8. So the correct answer is F. Uh, also, if you graphed this, 3x plus 1. So this is in slope-intercept form, mx plus b. And b is your y-intercept at positive 1, but has a slope of 3. So from here you would go um, left one, down three. And the reason why you do that is because it's the same thing as going uh, a rise of positive three and then a po rise of positive one. So that would be a slope of three. So that's, this is kind of like negative one, negative three. So a run of negative one, uh, down of negative three. And my graph is starting here at negative one. So that's where my dotted line is. And it says it's left of negative 1, or smaller than negative 1. That's my graph in yellow, is open circle and going in this direction. So basically, um, I had pen. I use pen for my tests and videos so that you guys can kind of see it a little bit better. So I'm erasing that part. If you had to graph this one, negative 2x minus 5, you're starting at negative 5. And here you have a slope of negative 2 over 1. So you're going down 2, run 1. Down to run one, down to write one from five. And then the reason why I went back up this direction, so that would be left one up two, or negative one, positive two. And the reason why I do that is I want to hit my boundary or my restriction of the domain. It's a closed circle because you have an equal sign. And if you locate negative three, so this is kind of like a visual for the answer, if you go to negative three, uh, there your answer should be somewhere down there at negative 8. So a couple of ways of finding the answer for that piecewise function. Question number 3, match the graph by writing the appropriate basic function in the first blank and then the equation or function in the second blank. These are one point each. So graph number 1, this is a cubic function. The equation is y equals x to the third. So it's an odd degree, starts down, ends up. Graph number 2, remember the v's is the absolute value. So if you want to highlight your V in there and your absolute value, it's a good idea. Absolute value function is Y equals absolute value of X. Again, you could have had something like F of X as well. Graph number three is a logistics function. Uh, you know it's a logistics because it's starting. Um, it kind of looks like a... Uh, uh, a sideways cubic, um, you can even argue it kind of looks like a cosine, but it flattens out, um, so it has restrictions on the, the range. That might be helpful to recognize that it's basically a bounded uh, function. Uh, your equation is y equals 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. Uh, graph number 4 is cosine. How do you know it is cosine? Cosine starts at 1 and finishes at 1. The equation is y equals cosine x. 
lot of students get confused with cosine and sine. If you always turn the paper sideways, it kind of looks like a C for cosine. Question number four, graph the uh, following function, x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. I believe I'll let you guys use that in your calculator, so let me show you that to you. So x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. Zoom 6. And that's what my graph looks like. Well, let's, let's read what was asked. Identify the intervals on which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So if I look at my graph, I can change the windows and make it a little bit better. So I'm going to cut down on my x values a little bit closer. And I noticed that um, at this point right there, so let's find it. So I do something like this. You can do uh, second calculate. And when it goes up high, that is our maximum. So I'm going to calculate a maximum here. I'm going to go a little bit to the left of it. If you have a newer calculator, um, it'll make a line once you press it there. And now it wants to the right bound or the right side. And then gas is kind of like exactly what you think it is, just be between your two bounds. And then there it has a maximum x value of negative. 0.548. I rounded to the nearest hundredths. And then my y value is around 0.63. And then over here, down here in my graph, this is a minimum, a local minimum. The reason why it's local because you know that the graph is eventually going to go further down. That would have been somewhere down here in absolute if you did find an absolute minimum. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So to the left. To the right and exact, and that gives you a number of one point, approximately 1.22. I rounded to the nearest hundredths, and this one has a negative 2.11. So, a couple of hints tells you identify the intervals. So, interval notation uh, where is it increasing? Well. If you think about increasing and decreasing questions, you're going from left to right. Left to right means you're focusing on which coordinate system, x or the y. You're focusing on the x's. Okay, so a lot of students, if you wrote anything with the y variables in there, that would have been incorrect. Okay, so increasing from left to right, so I have negative infinity. Just pretend you're a little person's here or whatever animal you like. As you go left to right, it's going up. So from negative infinity, so negative infinity, over here is positive infinity, negative infinity, to positive infinity. So as you're going left to right, you're noticing what's happening on the y-axis. You'll notice that our values are going higher. So that's called increasing. So from negative infinity to the x value, so here on your x-axis to think about it, this is negative 0.55. And that's what I have here. And then from here to here, it's decreasing. Your y values are going down. Again, you're focusing only on the x values to write your uh, intervals. So from negative 0.55, and we use parentheses because we, we said that this is not increasing and it's not decreasing. Um, and then you can go in this direction here. To so this value, that would be 1.22. That would be decreasing, and then 1.22 to infinity would be increasing. Um, you could state also at these points, I did accept if you, um, the answer was none, but if you wrote something like um, these points are both constant, um, I would accept that because it's not both, it's not increasing nor decreasing. That side, uh, not including the extra credit, was 16 points. Let's turn to the back side. Free response, make sure to show all your work and box your answers. Given f of x equals 2x squared minus 5 and g of x equals x minus 3, find the following below along with their domain. Okay, so uh, we'll do the domain last. I'm just going to substitute every time I see the function f, 
I'm just going to write 2x minus 5. There's f, 2x minus 5, f, 2x minus 5. And notice when you're doing those substitutions, you're doing those in parentheses. And then g of x is x minus 3. Again, I want you to notice that I put my substitutions here in parentheses. Well, I lied, most of them. This one I forgot. But you'll notice that it doesn't matter in this one here. Let's do the first example. This one says f plus g. So with addition, you don't have to use the parentheses. So you can drop them. So 2x squared, there's no like terms. There's a positive x. And negative 5 and a negative 3 gives you negative 8. Okay? To get the domain, basically what you're doing is you're adding the two functions together. So if you look at their domains, you're looking for the least restrictive domain. Well, 2x squared minus 5 is basically a, um, a quadratic. And if you go left to right, then uh, you have a domain of, you can pick any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. g of x equals x minus 3 is a linear equation, same thing. Going from left to right, you have arrow to arrow. That means you can pick any x value. So to get the full credit for this problem, it would be the domain with a um, negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's look at b. Now, look what happens if you don't put these in parentheses. 2x squared minus 5 and x minus 3. You're going to have to distribute that negative sign. Another way of thinking about it is a negative 1. So it's negative 1 times x uh, gives you negative x. And negative 1 times negative 3 gives you a positive 3. You combine like terms, you get 2x squared, uh, negative x, and then minus 2. Same thing, you're looking for the least restrictive domain. Since they're the same, then you'll have negative infinity to positive infinity. Question number C. Uh, here you have the two letters F and G, so it's multiplication. So I'm going to put those in parentheses. Uh, when you have those, you're going to use your box method, or you can use FOIL. 2x, minus, 2x squared minus 5, and then x minus 3. Remember, the order doesn't matter how you write those. And then you can just multiply those. 2x cubed, negative 5x, negative 6x squared, and positive 15. Now we're going to add our combined like terms. So 2x cubed, negative 6x squared, minus 5x plus 15, and your domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Good question asked is, when does the domain change? Well, look at this next problem. When you do division, you have a rational function, and you now have to reconsider the domain. You're just going to put an f there. You're going to put a g there. You realize that you don't need the set of parentheses. You're not going to do something crazy. This would be wrong. Like cancel x's there, because they're not factors. And so your answer is basically 2x squared minus 5 over x minus 3. But look at the domain. The domain, we said that you have to set the denominator not equal to 0. And when you add 3 there, x cannot equal 3. Well, you need to put it in um, interval notation. Um, so a, a fancy way of saying not 3 is basically saying uh, pick all your numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. But when you get to 3, don't include it. That's what a parenthesis means. And then union, or th you can't pick 3, but you can go to positive infinity. So you would need both of those to get 2 points. Question number 7, I gave back to you guys. Um, the instructions were to ask, um, I asked you guys to find um, the inverse of this equation algebraically. So to find it algebraically just means to sub every x, and now you're going to put in negative x. So every x value, we're putting negative x. Negative x squared is x squared. Uh, negative 2x, and that's a minus 1. Uh, notice how this is not the same exact equation, so it's not even. And if it was, if you factor out a negative 1, I'll show it to you guys, just factor out a negative 1 you would get something like this, negative um, x squared uh, plus 2x uh, plus 1. And you'll notice that inside the parentheses is not the uh, same exact one, so this is not the opposite of the original, so it's not odd. Um, so basically, we already know that it's um, neither. 
I number those wrong, it should be 7a and then 7b. How do you prove it graphically? If you actually just graphed it, 2x squared plus, x squared plus 2x minus 1, I, I think I'll let you guys use your graphing calculators on this. Uh, you'll notice that um, what's happening here is it's shifted over. Your, um, your vertex isn't on the... Um, it, is, it isn't on the um, y-axis. So it's not symmetrical about the y-axis. That would be evenly, so it's not. So not even. Um, it's not symmetrical about the origin from here. Like you have them kind of like folding, so like quadrants uh, 2 to 4 or 1 to 3 or something similar like that. So it's not symmetrical. So it's neither Um, so the answer is neither because it's not odd or even. And there, that problem's talking about symmetry. All right, question number nine. Find the x and y intercepts of the following functions. So g of x equals 1 over x squared. Uh, to find an x-intercept, you're going to make y equal to 0. The question is, where is y? It's right here. g of x equals y. So you can write that as y equals 1 over x squared. You're going to make your y value equal to 0. How do you solve for x? Well, you can make 0 uh, fraction by putting in 0 over 1. And then you can just cross multiply. That gives you 0 times x squared, which is 0. And then 1 times 1 is 1. Can 0 equal 1, class? <coughs> No, that means that there is no x-intercept. It doesn't exist. does not exist. All right, let's look at y. Let's find the y-intercept. You make x equal to 0. If you put a 0 there, it's 0 squared, and 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So again, same thing. There is no y-intercept. Um, two points. Um, remember, SW means to show your work. I gave you three points if you have at least one of your intercepts correct. Big mistake that students were making. Make sure you have that on your notes or formula sheets. One divided by zero is not zero. That's wrong. Remember, I don't know if you remember we copied that down. You can write that down. Uh, something like a variable divided by zero is no undefined. But if your 0 is in the numerator, 0 divided by anything is equal to 0. That is OK. Question number 10, graphing the rational function. Um, make sure to include asymptotes and a table of values. So a vertical asymptote basically says take the denominator and set it not equal to 0. If you take the square root of both sides, you'll get x is not equal to 0. So here in blue, at 0, there is my dotted line to represent my vertical asymptote. Okay. How do you find the horizontal asymptote? What you do is you compare their um, exponents. So here, let me write the problem, there is the exponent for the numerator is 0, and the denominator is 2. So you're looking at those two numbers. If you're looking at the highest degree, so if you have something really crazy, then you're just looking at the bit largest degrees, 0 compared to 2. And because the numerator is smaller than the denominator, you're always going to have a, um, a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And that's my pink dotted line. Okay. Now, how do you find your um, your values? How do you find your table of values? What do you start with? Well, if you look at x equals 0, here's x equals 0, right? And then basically, you're finding three points to the left. Look at that. Three points to the left of the blue line. And then three points to the right. Put that in our calculators. So I'm just going to type in. Um, so I think a lot of students made even a mistake just putting it into their calculators. 
So if I were doing the problem, I would do something like this. 1 divided by parentheses x squared. And then I want these numbers, so I can go to a second table set. And I'm going to make it um, auto and auto, automatic and automatic. So then now I'm going to press second graph. And then I can just copy down those numbers. <coughs> negative 3 gives me uh, 0.11, negative 2 gives me 0.25, and negative 1 gives me positive 1. 0 is your undefined where it says error there, 1, 1, 2, 2.5. And then 3.11. And then based off of that, then you just go ahead and graph it. Negative 3, case of mine, 1, 2, 3. 0.11 is very close to like 0 cents, so it's very close there. Negative 2 is like 0.25, so it's a little bit bigger, right? Um, negative 1, you got a dollar. And then you can just uh, make your smooth curve for your rational function and do the same thing on the other side. Um, I gave you two points for a correct graph. Hopefully you included all your asymptotes in there. Um, two points for the asymptotes algebraically and also including your table of values. So if you messed up on your table of values, I took off a point. Maybe you're missing one of your asymptotes, I took off a point. Um, on question number 10, I, I, it is possible that I gave you a zero, um, even though you tried it, because I wanted, I was looking at more of the the graph and those extra details. So that side was 2, 4, 6, 8, um, 16, 16 plus uh, 8 was 24, and then 24 plus 16 should have been out of, I don't know what I wrote on Aries. 40? Why do I get 41? Whatever's on Aries will be the correct. And that was the uh, ver solutions for H, E, and F.